I've built a few Gauge 1 live steam locomotives so far. This is the next one I'm going to build and it's going to be scratch built and it's going to be live steam and I hope you find the series of following videos interesting to watch. Hello and welcome to part 15 of the GWR Gauge 1 Prairie Tank Scratch Build. You see now we started to do some assembly work. I've really got enough parts now to assemble this and test the chassis on compressed air. So as you can see I've started to assemble the chassis again. I've just been working on one side for now and you can see there there's the valves and everything and I've also uh, putting in the gaskets as well. And I'll just show you how this valve works. Uh, one of the things I discovered and again from the drawings on the on this pendulum mechanism that moves that moves this slide valve backwards and forwards I discovered that the actual spacing for the holes was a little bit too much uh, because I couldn't quite get the slide valve distancing right to open and close the ports. I'll show you what I mean. Set up on the uh, rolling road and hopefully show you what's going on. I think the camera can just see that little port, front steam port, exposed. As I start to turn the wheels by the eccentrics you see now that steam port is covered and as we start to turn these eccentrics turn and the camera's probably not picked that up, can't, probably can't see that too well it's actually open now the other steam port the other side of the piston so that's how it works and this is how I mentioned this is a very clever idea this eccentric cam the way it works and you can see it working there they've closed the port open the other port and you set this up with the piston going backwards and forwards so for example that's fully open now and the piston is right down this end of the cylinder so as the wheels start to turn it closes this exhaust, starts to close this exhaust port which is what it's done now and also the piston is ready to return the other way so as the wheels start to turn it's just opened that port so that gives it steam on the other side of the piston to send the piston forward and that's basically how it all works so initially also you can see they've only put one piston on at the moment and the reason for that is just to work one at a time so if we get one working I know this one's right then I can concentrate on getting the other one right rather than having the two on and fiddle with both of them and wondering which one's not working properly is it this one is it that one so I always find with twin cylinders I work on one cylinder at a time so what I'll do now is we'll just carry on now and close this off and put the cover on with the gasket there we are now connected up to some uh, compressed air and let's just check if everything's everything's fairly free at the moment so it's not running around too bad so let me turn the compressed air on and stoop down a little bit. Oh, there we go. Almost. Yes. And there we are. And so this is a this is a big milestone this. And I shall just check on the. That's not even ringing on 
five psi. So there's hardly any any air taken to drive that. And I can't hear any hisses or any escaping air. So that's also pretty good. That's excellent. That's running real nice now. In fact, that's probably running far faster than it will ever go on the track. So let me wind the um, gas down a little bit, the pressure down. A little bit more like the scale speed it'll run at. Lift it up there so you can see. You can see the top of it working there. Also, you can see that move on here, you see this pendulum arrangement working off the eccentric. Like that. Turn it round, you see this way. So that is great. That's always encouraging then when you, uh, when you have to get a running chassis. So the next thing I will do, I'll do the same thing now uh, with the other cylinder to get that running. Let's say that's not even running on 5 psi. The dial, the pressure gauge is hardly registered in terms of the amount of air going through. But what's also nice is that, so I can't hear any escaping air, which is good. So that tells me everything's seems to be seated seated well and sealed reasonably well so I went through the same process for the left hand cylinder as I did for that this one set up the linkage just set the timing so both the valves are uh, both the ports are exposed at the right time and just show you this one now. Now interestingly with this one, but I can just hear a slight a slight escape of air. And I suspect that is probably just down to the uh, valve not running properly. Probably needs lapping. But as you can see, it runs pretty smooth. And again, that's not even running on five pounds per square inch. That's far faster than it will ever run when it's on the track. I mean, even then, you imagine that on the track, that's quite fast. But uh, that escaping sound is gone now. So as I said, I suspect it was just the valve uh, not quite seated properly yet. So we've got both cylinders and the timing correct on them now. Um, so I can just read what I will do, just really test them both together. I'll put the union on here and put the other piston back on. But I know now the both cylinders, uh, the timing and the valves are in the right position. So there's a pretty good chance that will run quite smoothly. OK, there we are now. Running very nicely on compressed air. And as I say, that's not even running on five pounds per square inch. There's about, it's only about three pounds. I've only just opened the regulator on the compressed air. But as you can see, that is running really nice. That's running really smoothly. So I should just let this run for a few minutes just to settle down, just to let the valves bed in. and see if everything else is tight. So I'll run this for at least half an hour and uh, give this chance to bed in. There you can see we've got the backward motion. So it runs 
that's good. That, that's a good. Uh, that's worked out well with these uh, eccentrics. Uh, I'm not sure whether the camera's picking that up, but as I'm turning it forward, this little cam here with the pin on have moved round. Has now changed the position of the timing now. So the direction I'm turning it, which is forward now, you see now it's running forward. So I say this slip eccentric is a very simple idea and it works really well on this gauge.